I hope you're ready. I'm going to give you a formula to solve any math problem. That's right, any math problem you can think of. Well, maybe not any math problem, but nearly any math problem. This is, this is my guy, this is Bry the Math Guy's six steps to solve any math problem, any hard math problem. Number one, you start the problem. Now I know what you're thinking, well of course, of course I'm starting the problem, but what I mean when I say start the problem is write what you know. And this is, this is really steps one and two. Step one is just to start. So many people look at a problem, they read it, they say, oh man, that is a hard problem. I, I don't know, I, I, don't, I can't do it. And they just give up right there. Many people don't even start. So you have to start, you have to start the problem. Step two. Step two is even if you don't know how to start, you, you do this whether you think you know how to start or whether you don't know how to start, you write down what you know and maybe draw pictures too. If drawing pictures helps you, if it's an applicable thing to do with this type of problem, you know, maybe making diagrams helps with lots of problems, you write down what you know or you draw any pictures. Even if the things that you know are arbitrary, like, like you really don't see how it's gonna help you in the problem, just writing down from the sentence, I'm assuming it's a word problem or something here, writing down from the sentence, or if it's not a word problem, just the facts. Can you translate the problem into mathematical statements? Okay, this is often a hard thing, but if you can take things from the sentence or from the problem and write down what that means in math, believe it or not, you're already making huge progress. So you've started, you wrote down what you know, even if it doesn't help you solve it. Step three is look at what you've written down, written, yeah, written down, write the logical conclusions. Okay, this doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it doesn't have to be the correct way to solve the problem. But what you have in mathematical statements, start putting them together, or maybe just individually, they have conclusions, right? They're if then kind of thing. What's the next logical step of the statement? Everything you write down, you know, it should be leading somewhere. Step number four, and this is something uh, I see many kind of earlier students run into. If you've written down what the logical conclusions are, it's time to think, what was the question? Right? You've got conclusions here, but are those conclusions really the question that was being pro proposed, asked? Right? Identify the question. Remember, what does the question ask? And what does the question ask in terms of mathematical statements? Right? Because if you can write down what you have, what the question states in math, and you can write what the question answers in math, that's really all you need. So step number four, you identify what the question is asking mathematically. Step number five, you write more conclusions, right? So now that we've written conclusions, and may maybe we've answered the question already. I mean, you'd be so surprised how fast you get this done. But if you identify the question mathematically, you should start to feel the wheels turning. You should start to have some insights. And maybe you can write even further conclusions, kind of pushing the barrier even closer to answering the questions. Because step six is just to solve the problem. Once you've done this, I mean, you should pretty much be there. I mean, all you've done is you've written what you have, you've written what you want, and you've written things to connect what you have and what you want. I mean, that's all we're really doing here. That's what we're doing with nearly any math problem. Now, I'm really describing how math proofs are written, but this works for lower level concepts too, at least in my opinion. Now, here's the thing, step six here, which was solve the problem. You might not be at step six yet. You might, not, you might have done the first five and say, well, I can't solve it, I still don't know. Step six, subsection B, is you walk away. You, yeah, you walk away from the problem because this is a common phenomenon. You may have heard of this sort of thing happening before. You, you want your brain to just turn off. Stop, stop working on the problem. Go do something else. Do something relaxing. You let your subconscious brain start working on the problem. This is the way that it works. You ever hear of having like insights in the shower? You know, when you weren't even thinking of it, like 
people, you know, they have a, this is a famous thing. I believe it. people, people talk about it. I promise they work on a hard problem. They can't figure it out. They go take a shower, you know, their mind drifts off, drifts off. And all of a sudden, ah, I, I got it. You know? <laughs> so this is what you do. And, and when you, when you have that insight, you can go back to solve the problem or, you know, you go back and you start working through the steps again. So there are my six steps for how to solve any problem at all, or at least at least most math problems. I don't know if it's a perfect list, but I think it works well for me. This is sort of how I tackled things, especially in grad school when I didn't really know how to solve uh, a problem so much. So I hope you enjoyed the list. I hope it you I hope you use it well. You know, I hope it helps you out. I really appreciate you watching the video until the very end, and I hope you have a great day.